Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Rift and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, we got a fun project that we can add to the end of this little mineshaft here. Because I was thinking, where is this all going? Is this going to another part of the base? Is this going to something that we can build aesthetically speaking? Or is it going towards something that we can actually use? And then I figured I could check the coordinates of this mineshaft here and compare them to other regions of the base. And wouldn't you know it, but this section right here, which now I've lost haste, I can't actually insta mine out. Let me go and grab the beacon effect very quickly one more time. There we go. Okay, we got some haste. So if we dig out this wall here, this actually coincides with a spot that doesn't have any of the machinery. It's not going to interfere with the area downstairs where we have our copper aging facility. And so what I thought we could do today is set up a redstone powered flying machine elevator which is going to take us from this level all the way down to the copper aging setup because to get down there right now all I've been doing is jumping down the hole that has the beacon because naturally it has to have sky access so it's a hole all the way down to where that beacon is set up and now that we're no longer strip mining too much of this area I might end up removing the beacon relatively soon we need to do a bit more terraforming around here it's nice to have it digging out tunnels but there are places elsewhere that we could use Use that beacon and honestly having the giant ray of light beaming up into the sky is not always my favorite thing about beacons. So we need an alternative way of getting down to the copper aging setup and considering I've been pulling all of this copper out of the walls as I go I've got a couple of like stacks of blocks of raw copper going in my inventory right now why not have a redstone powered elevator that's going to take us down to the biggest redstone contraption we have built in the series so far and it's an opportunity to look at vertical flying machines which are not something we really covered in the series so far and they are something we're going to have to build a little differently to the other flying machines in order to get them to work properly. Now unfortunately as with previous episodes we've done on redstone contraptions and flying machines I can't guarantee that this is going to work the same way on bedrock edition because this relies on a couple of redstone behaviors which are kind of unique to java edition. We're going to be using stuff like quasi connectivity which a lot of flying machines rely on anyway and this is a pretty compact design which unfortunately isn't going to be the case on bedrock edition. I think the same is still possible on Bedrock Edition if you reconfigure the flying machines, but it's probably not going to be as compact as it is here in Java. Before we go any further, let's head out to the plains opposite the Dripstone Cave Base so that I can show you a brief demonstration of how these vertical flying machines are going to work. I'm going to set one up over here. We're going to need a couple of unpushable blocks to start with. I'm going to be using furnaces for this, but obsidian is a pretty common pick. You can also use basically anything in Java Edition that has a GUI, with the exception of shulker boxes because they break when pushed. But, you know, basically anything like, you know, a container, like a barrel or something like that is not going to be a pushable block. And of course it rains when I try to demonstrate redstone stuff outside, so uh, maybe we'll go over to the savannah instead. There we go. It's a little grey and cloudy here but at least it's not raining. So we're going to put down a couple of furnaces here. These are going to be the stopper blocks for our flying machine. Then we're going to pillar up into the sky where we're going to place a second set of furnaces and these are going to be our higher up stopper blocks to make sure the flying machine doesn't just take off and head towards the build limit. Normally when we build a flying machine we're building it horizontally so we have a sticky piston facing into a slime block there, a sticky piston facing into a slime block there and two observers parked on top of this thing attached to the slime blocks on either side and feeding redstone power in diagonally to each of these pistons. So the whole setup looks like this. Pretty compact and very easy to set up. Unfortunately, you can't orient this whole thing 90 degrees to get a vertical flying machine. It doesn't quite work that way because you might presume that you need a sticky piston facing upwards with a slime block up there and then a sticky piston facing downwards with a slime block attached to the face there and then you've got to figure out where to put the observers. You could put one there and put one there so the redstone outputs face towards the pistons but unfortunately, quasi-connectivity does not work diagonally sideways. It only works vertically. So when we take a torch or a helper block and try and activate this machine, neither of the observers actually activate anything. You might think we could have the observers facing into the side of the slime blocks as well, but unfortunately that just creates a redstone clock because it has the potential to activate this one piston over and over again. And if you activate both the observers, the timing breaks the machine entirely and it ends up needing to be broken somewhere along the line so that you can turn the whole thing off. The good news is making a vertical flying machine doesn't require all that many more components. We just need one extra slime block. We're going to start by pillaring up with two slime blocks. We're going to place an observer facing that way. We're going to add a sticky 
sticky piston on top of that with a slime block on top of it and another sticky piston facing downwards that's going to push and pull these two slime blocks which will push and pull the observer and the piston attached to their sides. Last of all we attach an observer to the top slime block facing this way and that is going to provide power to this sticky piston which is going to allow this whole thing to move up and down depending on which observer we activate. Now if we place a torch underneath this observer you'll find the entire machine taking off towards the sky and stopping perfectly on the furnaces that we placed up there. And then if we activate this observer now, it's going to have the entire thing come back down. And if we ride the entire thing down, we can actually use this as an elevator platform, although not a particularly attractive one. So there are other configurations of vertical flying machines, of course, you can build these things in many different ways, but the way I've built it actually allows you to build it with honey blocks as well. And that means we can have these machines flying side by side next to each other, and as long as they are activated at exactly the same time, possible to trigger both flying machines at once, allowing them to act as a coherent mechanism, allowing them to act basically as the same machine. So I'm going to set up something down here so that we can activate two observers at once, because of course if we put something underneath that observer right now it's just going to launch the slime block flying machine but then if we repeat the same process with the honey blocks we have two flying machines working right next to each other side by side the reason we have to be more cautious around honey blocks is that they do not conduct redstone power in the way that slime blocks do so it's actually kind of difficult to build a flying machine that works with honey blocks adjacent to slime blocks because you need to make sure that the observers are powering the pistons directly or indirectly potentially with quasi connectivity instead of trying to channel the redstone power through the honey blocks themselves. But now if we grab a button out of our redstone box and we activate that redstone wire, both machines activate in tandem and the whole thing starts flying up towards the sky, which thankfully is clearing up now that it's morning. Now let's see what happens when we activate one of these machines at once, just to make sure that you understand exactly why we need to build these things to work in parallel. If we activate this slime block flying machine now here, it's still going to work because the signal from that observer is actually activating all of the pistons around it. But then if we update an observer down here, let's say if we remove this redstone dust, yep, that's just taken half of the other flying machine away with it. So unfortunately, when we do something with this flying machine, it's not a flying machine anymore. It's not going to do anything. Then up at the top here, we can see that this honey block has grabbed the observer from the side instead of it being level with the other observer. So unfortunately, this whole contraption is going to break a couple of different times as it goes back down. It's left a sticky piston in the air and it's taken a couple of the slime blocks with it, just completely broken the circuit next door. If we build slime block and honey block machines next to each other, those can actually act independently and that can get around the piston push limit that's going to allow us to create a larger platform for our elevator, but we do need to make sure the machines are wired in parallel so that they work together and have less chance of breaking. So back in our mine shaft here, we're going to do a little bit of digging. I need to make sure that this has an open elevator shaft all the way down to the level where our copper aging facility is which means I'm probably going to have to move the beacon anyway to dig out a bunch of this stone. So we're going to do this off camera because it's going to be a lot of digging. It's not going to be particularly exciting even as a time lapse. And when we come back, we'll hopefully be able to start setting up our elevator platform. So a short time later, here we are at the bottom of our elevator shaft. And I was lucky enough that one of the blocks right in the wall here actually was within range of the haste beacon. So we did end up getting a bit of haste effect and it didn't take me hours and hours to clear out this entire area. But this is where we can start laying the foundations for our flying machine. I've left a row of furnaces up at the top there as our immovable block because I think they'll blend in best with the surroundings being mostly that kind of stone texture on the top and on the side. But the way I actually want to arrange the flying machine is not necessarily to have it along this wall. In fact, I think I want to have it on this side here and then another one on the opposite side here. I want it to be five blocks long on each side and basically have a five block platform in the center. So a five by five area total because I have some cool ideas for the aesthetics of this whole thing and how it's going to look as a piece of machinery. And so this is where we're going to stack up our honey blocks and our slime blocks to start the flying machines. Obviously, we're going to have two honey blocks and two slime blocks to begin with. We need to have our observers facing downwards there. We're going to have them looking at a line of redstone dust, which will activate them right now, but there's nothing to activate, so we don't need to worry about the machine flying up and breaking apart as it goes. We'll have our sticky pistons facing up here, one of the corresponding honey or slime blocks there, and all of the other pistons facing downwards, which I had to remove some blocks to get those in. But now we are all set up, aside from the observers that need to be facing 
outwards towards those pistons at the back there. Or I mean, in terms of the way the observers are facing, they're facing inwards towards the platform, but the output is facing out towards these pistons. On the opposite side, we want to make sure that the slime blocks and honey blocks alternate in the opposing pattern, basically, so that we don't end up with them sticking to each other as they travel here. Because despite the fact that two of these pistons could theoretically share a load between them, the game doesn't always calculate piston push limits like that. And so it's important to make sure that each of these is an independent set of blocks. In the middle, we're extending the arms of slime or honey blocks so that they meet in the middle. Once again, making sure that the blocks of a similar type from each side do not connect. And then so that we can actually place some blocks in the middle here without the whole platform trying to move, we're going to take those observers out. But we'll put them back in a second. And what we're going to put here is either going to be redstone lamps or note blocks. And I think we're going to use note blocks for this one. I'll go into why in just a second, but it's just occurred to me that I might actually want to make this two blocks wider, one on each side basically, so that the platform of note blocks can be five by five and it gives the player adequate space to stand because we're going to be activating the note blocks from up there and it's not going to leave us with much place on the elevator. So I'm going to need to take a block out from each wall and make this whole thing 11 blocks wide instead of nine. Yep, we're going to have to do that. There's no way around it really. Okay, the fly machine is now widened out by one block on each side, which means this platform here is going to be a little bit larger, but that should be fine. Each of these arms should have enough blocks to bear the load. Now, before we reattach the observers, we're actually going to grab the note blocks that I mentioned earlier, and we're just going to have a few of those on each side. Basically, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, like so, and we're going to have a row of five on the other side as well, and that's what the observers are going to be looking at. So to activate the downwards mechanism of this this elevator platform, each of these note blocks is going to play simultaneously. And when they do that, the observers are going to detect that the note blocks have been played, and that's what's going to start the whole platform moving. Right now, that's not going to do anything because we're at the bottom of the world here, whereas down here, these observers on the bottom row are the ones that activate the upwards movement of the flying machine. And so we're going to be stringing these together with some redstone wire that's just going to be linked up to a button here that once we press that is going to rocket us up to the ceiling. Or I say rocket, it's, it's actually going to move pretty slowly. Fly, slime block flying machines are not the fastest way to travel. But at the very least, it is going to set us in motion. Now back up at the top here, I'd stashed a few more furnaces because it's very important that we make sure there are immovable blocks up here for the flying machine to come to rest against. And we're going to line those up with the pistons at the back there so that all of the flying machines and the note blocks and the platform that we build on here can come to rest at floor level. And this right here should be adequate to make sure the flying machine stops in the right place and it's not going to attach to the furnaces to take them back down. There aren't even any slime blocks on this side, it just needs to be a block that a piston cannot push and move. We could even if we want to make sure that there are just enough blocks above here that the stone walls aren't going to be pushed up any further by the pistons and we could remove the furnaces from the equation entirely but in case you want to adapt this to be built elsewhere, furnaces are usually a pretty good idea. Now that we have this platform all laid out though, we can basically turn this into whatever kind of decorated elevator platform we want to. We can set up a bunch of blocks on here. We're just going to use slabs for this, but anything that forms a double slab is still technically only counted as one block that the piston needs to push. We can have a lowered section in here, and we're actually going to leave the center open because we can do some cool stuff with that aesthetically. For the sake of the mechanism, though, we will need to connect all of this redstone to a single redstone power source, preferably a button that we can press and it will just send us off on our way. For now, that's just going to be a very simple redstone wire that terminates under this block. We're going to put a button on that block and there's only 13 blocks worth of travel for the redstone dust to be powered. So that should all hopefully be powered by this one circuit. And now when I press the button, our elevator platform starts to move in a very, very noisy way. <laughs> but it is moving. And it eventually comes to rest at the station that we've made for it. All of the furnaces around the outside preventing the slime block flying machine from going any further. Now we can fill in the walls up here a little bit since we don't need to worry about these bits being affected by the slime blocks. We can probably cover over the furnaces as well to make them feel a little bit more flush with the cave around them. Once we filled the walls in a little bit, it looks a lot more cozy and compact. And I'm kind of actually tempted to change some of the mineshaft supports here so that it's a little bit more 
more symmetrical and it lines up, otherwise we've got this weird gap on this side which isn't there on that side, and the tunnel isn't going at an angle anymore, so I might readjust that a little bit later. In the meantime though, we need to figure out a mechanism to send this whole flying machine down one block, and the simplest way to do that, although perhaps not the most aesthetically pleasing, is just to run a redstone signal across all of these note blocks here. We'll have two arms of redstone dust coming out on the side here, so really the only thing the player is going to be standing on is this spruce platform in the center, which once again is why I wanted to widen the flying machine out so that it had a three block wide section that we could stand on. Because the flying machine is going to look a lot wider once it starts moving, but in the meantime we need a place for the player to board. And all you need to do is press this button in the center here, that'll activate both of the arms of redstone wire here, and we need to make sure that none of those are attached to anything else because they could trigger the observers in a sort of weird way. But activating the note blocks, playing the note blocks through this redstone connection will activate all of the observers once, and that should be enough to get the flying machine moving. Yep, there we go, and it becomes detached from the furnaces all around it and starts to descend through the elevator shaft, which is causing us as a player to jump up and down a little bit, but that's fine. Once it reaches the cabin at the bottom of the world, the flying machine will come to a complete stop and we can disembark in whatever direction we choose to. I think probably out this way, which is going to require us to turn around and face the same direction that we left, but I kind of do that instinctively. And the most important aspect of the design here is that the flying machine comes to a stop one block above the redstone dust here, otherwise it's going to squash itself and we're never going to get this thing moving again. Not to mention the fact that if we adjust just any of these blocks down here after the fact, it's going to have the flying machines push the pistons up, which is going to attach the honey blocks to the side of the blocks that are currently on top of the slime blocks, and the whole machine is going to break. So fragile though this whole thing may seem, I think it's actually going to work pretty well, and there are now some elements of this which we can adjust slightly. Take for example the elevator go button, we're probably going to move that to somewhere a little bit further off the side so that we can make room for an entrance around here. And as long as we use blocks that cannot be pulled, like once again furnaces, the non-pushable blocks, even stuff like glazed terracotta, we can decorate the elevator shaft here, even going so far as to put some blocks next to the moving parts that might stick to stuff like the slime blocks and the honey blocks, and that way we can make this whole thing feel a little bit less open, because right now it does feel like we could just walk off the edge of the elevator and fall to our deaths down the shaft here. But the other thing I would absolutely love to do, and here's hoping I've got enough materials to do a pretty decent demonstration right now, is to get a bunch of grindstones and string them together up the center of this thing through this block in the middle because grindstones as you know have a GUI because they're used for repairs and so that means they're not going to be a movable block when it comes to slime blocks and honey blocks they're not going to be pulled with them and so by alternating them up through the center of the platform like so we can make it look like there is this giant chain that this thing is being pulled on functionally speaking these grindstones don't actually have any use whatsoever but aesthetically speaking they can look like they are the mechanism that's driving this entire platform and all we will need is a buttload of grindstones, but we've got the sticks and slabs to do it, so let's give this a try. We might even be able to place them as we go up here, and nope, yeah, the flying machine is going to leave me behind. Let's see if we can catch up with it. Yeah, I didn't quite make enough grindstones to get myself to the top of this thing, but I like the aesthetic of this a lot. This massive chain going all the way from the bottom of the world to the top. Yes, yes, a really big fan of that. And so if we have that go into the ceiling, we can do a little bit more to dress that up, but I really like that as part of the mechanism. The second thing that I want to change a little bit if we can is the way these note blocks are activated because frankly I think this line of redstone wire being visible here isn't the greatest thing about this. I mean potentially we can wall this off with trapdoors and I'm pretty sure that when we activate it yeah the trapdoors are all going to move that's not ideal. I guess one option could be to have observers detecting a line of redstone dust that was higher up so that the player couldn't see it as you walked in at this level the observers would be along the top of here and then redstone changing on top of the observer would activate the note block which would then start the flying machine going so yeah I suppose that's an option it gets the redstone wire one block further out of sight. We could even if we wanted to have the redstone wire running along a set of droppers which would activate the observers which would activate the blocks below which would activate the note blocks and then the redstone wire is completely out of sight we could theoretically bring the roof down a little bit as well so that the whole thing feels a little bit more claustrophobic but you don't end up seeing any of the redstone dust that's wiring this whole thing up and if we rewire the redstone at the back here so that this button activates dust behind the block we could potentially seal that 
part off as well, just making sure I don't cut off any redstone dust in the process of doing this, because then our button just becomes one press, and then the entire platform moves without you really seeing the mechanism itself. The one thing we need to do is fit a solid block in between the observer and the note block here, and I figure stone brick will probably do the job for now. We can swap that out for something that looks a little bit more polished at a later date, and let's see how this works now. If we hit the button, there we go. The whole thing makes a giant tick <laughs> noise because of all the droppers, but it does seem to work pretty functionally. The one thing you have to make sure is that you don't step out onto any of the other components when you're heading back upwards, because then you'll end up suffocating in one of the walls up there. But something I'm considering putting in, perhaps to encourage the player to stay in this spruce platform, is once it arrives down here, once the flying machine has docked with this setup, some other pistons could push blocks in from the walls here, and that could potentially make it look like the platform has locked into place and encourage players to only step on the spruce section of it. We still need to rewire this, and I would love to decorate this mineshaft with a few bits and pieces. I'm thinking maybe barrels up the sides as though the straps of the barrel are like guide rails for the flying machine. There's a bunch of different stuff we can do. I'm going to go away and tinker with some ideas, and I'll be back to you folks once we're ready to unveil this grand-looking elevator shaft. Hey folks, welcome back. So while I still need to do a little bit of dressing up of this area, and I'm still not entirely certain how I want this to look, I'm a lot happier with the elevator shaft itself. I think the only thing we're missing is a little bit of light bossa nova for some lift music. But now, as we press this button, the surroundings are completely changed. A lot of them are made out of tough. I kind of like the idea of tough representing rough cave walls. But as we descend, there are a few patches of other material, some of which is still being left to despawn, and as we go down here, I've actually included a couple of other veins of material in the walls. I like the idea of there being a bit of copper and some shroom lights in there providing a little bit of ethereal light, and of course a bit of mossy cobblestone to break up the tuff. I'm really enjoying the combination of mossy cobblestone and tuff. I think it's a really neat combination. There is enough natural, if a little bit kind of dull, yellow-green in the tuff that it blends really nicely with the mossy cobbles. So I think that works out very, very well. And on some of the veins, I went a little bit more overboard. I decided to go a little bit more detailed in some of them, and I wanted to add in some vines here and there, since I had them from crafting the mossy cobblestone from the jungle vines that are up there, but also because we can disguise the open faces of some of these blocks here and there. We could also put some glow lichen up in here as well. I think glow lichen would fit very well. I just haven't farmed up a huge amount of that right now. Once we get down to this level, we're going to step off into a tunnel that's going to lead around into the main area of the copper aging facility, but for now we can just kind of dig down through the floor around here and once we hop out we're right over here so nice and easy to get to and I'll probably just peel it back up with a little bit of tough so that I can remember exactly where we are and we'll probably come out somewhere around the middle of the room over there. Around the edge of the elevator platform I've actually put a few more of the furnaces just to make sure that this whole area is relatively speaking blocked off. Still got a little bit of an excess there but I liked the idea that we could have a few blocks down here that you won't really see as you're coming down here in the first place unless you are daring enough to look over the edge of the platform, but it will seal the whole area off and it prevented some blocks from falling down here. We also can eliminate the possibility of just wandering off the side of the platform, and I could make sure that the whole area was relatively well lit to make sure that we didn't end up getting any weird mob spawns down here on the platform, as long as the blocks down here were lit up, then the platform in the center would be as well. But I didn't want to go overboard with the veins of ore in the walls and the darker material, I just threw in a bit of smooth basalt and blackstone there behind the mossy cobbles, so I decided we would put in a few more man-made kind of lighting features down here, these sort of little simple archways, the kind of thing that you might find on the exterior of a castle build, but I like them in interiors as well, and just a single simple lantern in there really does the trick lighting this place up. And I put them at sort of random heights throughout the elevator shaft down here. I, I kind of decided that they shouldn't really be in too many organized places, and I'd already put veins at sort of random heights, some of them even intersecting a little bit with those arches with the lanterns in, so we could make a couple of them look a little bit more broken and worn down if we wanted to. But the idea is that the miners themselves will have fitted these into the walls after they realized that they needed to use this area a lot more regularly, and this elevator is going to have been here for a while. It's something the miners have fitted in here themselves, but it's an established feature of the mine at this point, and I figure we can probably just finish up the wall here where I noticed I'd left a patch of tough unfinished, but that should be 
probably what I'm going to consider the finishing touches to this mineshaft for now. But overall, I'm really happy with how this came together. I think the chain <laughs> made out of all the grindstones in the center is probably one of my favorite features of this whole thing. And I love the fact that it can come up through the floor here without interfering with the flying machine. I think this whole thing fits really well with the technology of this area. And obviously we could put in like a soul sand bubble column to get back up there if we wanted a more quick and efficient method of transport but doing projects like this once again is kind of fun it lends a little bit of credence to the ideas that we're putting together in terms of world building here and the kind of projects that i want to work with and it's a fun redstone solution to a problem that could be solved pretty easily in other ways but just allows us to flex our redstone capabilities a little bit more and put to use some of these more interesting flying machine contraptions but that is where we're going to wrap things up for this episode of the minecraft survival guide folks i do hope you've enjoyed this look at slime block flying machines in a vertical formation and hopefully you'll find some ways to squeeze this into your own worlds as well thank you so much for watching the minecraft survival guide my name has been pixel riffs don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you folks soon take care bye for now